Okay, you guys, so I gotta try to go a little faster because apparently if my my video is more than 15 minutes, YouTube doesn't like it, so I don't know how to fix that because there you go. Anyway, so I have the rotary garden together. Um, and again, um, this is eight arms with seven grower cups on each one. Um, interspersed, total seven times eight, 56. That's how many plants. Eventually wanna expand this by maybe adding two more rows, which means I'll have to intersperse it and go from there. But the first engineering thing that I ran into, um, that was lack of planning on my part, or just lack of experience, because I have no engineering background whatsoever, is that when this rotates, the root protectors are running into the strut. Um, and so there's two things I can do. I can spend an additional, will be 17, for each one of the rollers to get the bigger rollers um, to move it out of there because I don't have any other way to hold the support than with this structure right now. Or um, I can move the arms in two inches, which will affect my growth rate. The plants will still um, have enough room to grow um, and doesn't really change anything. It's just way a lot more work. Um, but since my budget is pretty much gone and I really don't want to spend more money on this one until I'm sure it works. I'll make a little, if it's not going to affect the, the plant growth, then I'm not worried about it. Um, the light bar that I'm creating from scratch, is a 360 degree light bar and it's going to be the um, high power, low output diodes, um, which are a little bit more expensive. They're like 45 cents as opposed to the 27 cents, um, which I'm going to be working on more once I get this straightened out. Um, and, you know, I have a, a space that I'm going to hopefully use, which is the Tampa Hacker um, space, um, which is really, really neat. It's just $50 a month, and, you know, my budget's kind of not great, so I'm going to have to work something out with that probably cut off my internet um but anyway um that being said um i'm really happy with where this has gotten and i am going to go ahead and, and um the one thing i did have a problem with but i worked it out was i didn't have anybody to help me put these two ends together so i took a bar and put it at both ends and then wound the rope in the middle and it, it pulled it together which we used to do that in the Navy sometimes to move ships, you know, a couple of feet or from from tie down to tie down, which, you know, they don't like you to do that anymore because of the danger and blah, blah, blah. But that's how we did it. Um, so it worked really well and I got it secured. Now that I got that done, now I have to, you know, move the ribs in one foot. And of course, um, I have to do that by remapping out the whole um, quadrants because you don't want to do it by by eye sight so anyway that being said that's going to be my choice um, for now because time is easier than money so um, remember let's see how many minutes okay so um, the other thing I wanted to talk about real quick is um, the the wood choice I'm really happy with how the wood came out um, the one piece that, because this is, you know, I was real worried about using anything less than an inch, and I was going to use that marine board, where, I, you know, that just turned into a whole mess because trying to find somebody who could cut it for me, everybody was just giving me a ration of crap, and they're like, what are you using it for? I'm like, dude, just cut me two circles that are, that are equal. But the neat thing is, is that, um need is a really good mother in, of invention and, and so I happen to have a um, store credit at Home Depot and so they happen to get some of this red birch um, hardwood AA quality um, wood in which birch is like the second hardest wood that I could get um, hickory was the hardest um, but it was also more brittle so I went with this and then I just used the fiberglass resin over it 
um, and it made it really, really nice and, I mean, I was knocking on it before and it's, it's like really nice now and there's no flex, there's no bow, um, and it's a really good choice. And I'm also happy with my cutting the way I did it. Um, it worked out really well and the fact that I went slow and didn't use too fine a cut, so I tried to keep it as outside of the lines as possible instead of inside the lines. And then once I had that done and I was down to that point, I took a bunch of these and put the two ends together and used my sander to course it down. And the tolerance for circles rolling at one rotation per hour is really not a lot. So before I put the cups in, I was rolling it and it was just, it was fine. It had a little bit of, there were some areas that I'm going to go over eventually, but it wasn't even enough to cause a problem. I mean, it just kind of jiggled a little bit and then kept going. Um, but it was almost, if I wouldn't have been watching for it, I don't think I would have noticed. But anyway, um, it's the whole process of engineering. Um, and what was I going to say? Oh, power tools. Stick with the ones that have the cords, even if you have to go to like a, a pawn shop. Because the thing that kept, slowed me down the most um, was this. And even though I have a really, really good rigid industrial strength drill gun every single tube I went through two batteries because of the torquing value and, and that kind of thing um, and so you know that meant I could only do one or two of these a day whereas if I had had a drill gun that had you know a cord on it because when I went to the the pawn shop I was looking at some of the Hitachis and stuff like that the older ones that were the ones they used to use were actually torque value wise were stronger than these um, they had just all the same settings and you know it was twenty nine dollars and it worked and yeah this is nice and it's new and all that and it has all the flashy you know gadgets the flashlight and and all of that stuff and it sounds like a train, like one of the old trains. And it's got great torque, but the problem is the more you use it, the more the battery goes down. And so even though it has a quick four hour charge, which is considered quick, if I had a cord on it, I would have been able to do all of these in one day. So um, that being said, there is a lot to be said for not getting caught up in the whole battery craze because now most of the industrial strength ones don't even come with batteries. The batteries cost more than than the tool so you know um, if I had my druthers to do it all over again I would go to a pawn shop spend time you know researching it while you're there let them you know they need to let you try them out um, and then when as soon as you get home try them out on something real because they're not gonna let you cut things or anything like that or drill into anything they're just gonna let you press the button and do that but take it home immediately try it out and then make sure there's a return policy of it at least you know a week or a day or whatever and if it doesn't have that then don't buy it because if it can't be trusted for you to go home and try it on something real then they're hiding something so all done with that um remember even if you do a whole lot of planning you can always have little bumps in the road and remember there if you're not a professional and you don't have professional equipment and you don't have CAD and all that you're not going to know some of these things and this has been my first major hook you know issue for me um, so it's not a big deal and every day is a growth and you learn from it so when I make my other five I will already have you know gone through that process and when I start working with other people and helping them build their own I can share with them these pieces of information that they may not think of and help somebody else try to do it a little better um, so I'm gonna let you guys go um, remember 
Emotions are gifts you give yourself. Nobody can give them or take them away from you. Um, and have a great day. And remember, trying to do your dream is not always easy. And you're not always going to have a lot of support. But unless you're trying to do something crazy, like make a pair of rice paper wings and jump off the Empire State Building and people tell you don't do it, that's probably something you shouldn't do. But if somebody is telling you don't, you know, there's no way you can start an urban farm in the middle of a city. Well, you know what? Other people have done it. People just like us. So, you can do it. Y'all have a great day. Bye.